On the agenda tonight, we're going to be taking a look at the application of auto-tune in a live performance by Michael Bublé performing I've Got the World on a String. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this request was sent in to take a look at this live performance by Michael Bublé. The links to the two performances that I'm going to be featuring tonight are in the description below. So you guys can click on those for the full band sound. I've isolated the vocals as I've done on previous analysis videos for auto-tune and pitch correction. So the first one we're going to listen to is from a daytime TV show or maybe primetime TV show with a live performance. And the application of auto-tune on there was not done particularly well. And the person that requested this video said they thought there was something going wrong here and auto-tune was being applied. What I wanted to do with this video is show the application of auto-tune in the live performance from the TV show and compare it to the waveforms of a live vocal of Michael's from Madison Square Garden. But as soon as I started listening to his performance at Madison Square Garden, I realized that was auto-tuned as well. But ironically, the performance that I was sent from the TV show where somebody says, is he using auto-tune? Because they were having a problem with it on the day of the performance, they turned it off about halfway through the performance. So we do actually get a live vocal from Michael that isn't auto-tune because the auto-tune wasn't working properly. Obviously there are artifacts from the process of extracting the vocal and isolating it, but you'll be able to hear the auto-tune, I hope very clearly by now if you've watched the previous videos. I've got the world on a string I'm sitting on a rainbow I got that string around my fingers Oh, what a world and what a life I'm in love so I'm just going to stop it there. That was our first verse and you might have been able to hear the auto-tune snapping it to the notes that it shouldn't have been snapping it to. We'll have a little listen again, but try and hear in the vocal the way that it flips between notes very quickly. I'm sitting on a rainbow. I mean, it, as soon as we start this, you can tell instantly something weird is happening to Michael's voice. I got that string around my finger. I mean, there is a classic example of auto-tune where the software is snapping it to notes, but it's not sure where that note is. And this might just be due to the fact that Michael has such a free form way of singing that he slides up and down the glissando that I've mentioned as a technical term for it. But musically, he just slides up and down with his voice. But when you're using autotune, that's going to be potentially a problem because it's going to want to snap it to all of those notes that you're ascending through. This is a great advert for why you should just try and sing live without auto-tune because if it goes wrong, then everyone knows you're using auto-tune and for me, it suddenly makes the performance almost unwatchable because you know that you're not listening to somebody's natural voice. It's going through software before it's coming out of the speakers. But a great example here of the application of auto-tune live, but it done quite badly. Let's just have a listen to this phrase again. I got that string around my fingers. And you can hear the wobbles going on. I would say that the auto-tune, you can see it is snapping it in part to the notes, but it's not being as accurate as you'd normally expect it to be. So I think something was going a little bit wrong here. Oh, what a world and what a life. I'm in love. You can still hear that auto-tune wobbling going on. So we'll get rid of that and we'll go to the Madison Square Garden performance now. This is all auto-tuned. Unfortunately, it's true. Just to point out how the waveforms are so clear from auto-tune to a natural voice, I didn't label these videos before putting them on my video editing software. So I just look at the lines to see 
which was the auto-tune video and which one wasn't. And the audio from them, from both of the performance, aren't attached. I just have to look at the waveforms and then get the audio and whichever, either auto-tuned in Madison Square Garden or the TV show, whichever one I have, I then drag it underneath the videos that I haven't labeled. But that's how clear they are. You can instantly see, without having to label them, which waveforms are auto-tuned the whole way through. But let's have a listen to this. I have got the world on a string And I'm sitting on a rainbow I got that string around my finger uh, Oh, what a world and what a life uh, I am in love So, there we have it. <laughs> I think the difference is now there's the technology to be able to do this. I can take somebody's voice out of a song and analyze it individually without all of those other instruments getting involved. So now we can see auto-tune in action. And as you guys will know, look here, we're snapping pretty much to the line. We're on the line. There's, it's just going to be doing this the whole way through. In fact, later on, it's even more obvious. But then we're on the line here... This is exactly the same vocal that we've just heard. It's the same song, the same first verse. And look at this classic auto-tune here. As soon as you start seeing this, slightly flat and then dead on the line, 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 dead on the line. As soon as you start seeing dead on the line, waveforms don't lie. And we will be able to compare this a little bit later on to Michael's natural voice, which isn't always dead on the line because great singers, and he is a great singer, he's really accurate without auto-tune. So it just makes it even more senseless, in my opinion, to be applying it because he is so close to the notes anyway, he sometimes applies vibrato just above the note and it sounds great, but doing it like this, let me just take you back to the beginning because even in the intro, he has an ad lib where he goes, uh -huh -huh, and he does that kind of thing, but it sounds like, uh -huh -huh. it sounds really weird because of the auto tune. Uh -huh. Listen to the lack of dynamics in, or dynamic range in that expression, or in that tiny little ad lib that he did, where he went, ah ha ha. It sounds like that, ah ha ha. Just all on one level. Let me take it back so you can hear it again. Ah ha ha. It's nothing like a, uh -huh. there's no breath in there. It's just all been snapped to a note. So it starts sounding mechanical because that's exactly what's happening to it. It's getting snapped to the lines. But let's resume it going back to the original TV performance where the auto tune's going a bit wrong. Now I got a song that I sing and I can make the rain go. Any time I move my finger, a lucky me, I can't just see, I'm in love. Here we go. So let's take this back a little bit. And I'm just going to move it back. Start looking at these waveforms here. We are pretty much on the line here. At this point, I'm going to give Michael the benefit of the doubt here. He is really accurate and he will hit lines now and again because he's that good a singer. But here, this is a bit of a giveaway that now somebody has literally flicked the switch of auto-tune and turned it off. I've mentioned about it being used live. It's literally like a stomp box or distortion, if you don't play guitar, a distortion pedal. You turn it on when you want distortion, you turn it off when you don't want it. Auto-tune's exactly the same in a live setting. So they've turned it on at the beginning thinking, oh, it's gonna snap the notes, we're gonna be really accurate, it's gonna be a great live sounding vocal, even though we're using auto-tune. But they can hear that it's doing it incorrectly and we're getting this weird step effect like a keyboard because that's effectively what's happening It's making the voice into a keyboard. So they've now turned it off and I think they probably turned it off in 
probably look, we're still a bit auto-tuned here, a bit auto-tuned here, auto-tuned coming down, and I think coming back up, I said I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt here, as we move forward, now we are into Michael's natural voice. So we can start to look at the waveforms now from the TV performance as our reference for his natural voice and the Madison Square Garden performance as a comparison to what is auto-tuned the whole way through. So now let's jump into the Madison Square Garden version, which is auto-tuned the whole way through. I've got a song that I sing and I can make that ring go Anytime I move my finger I'm lucky me can't you see that I'm in love? And there we have it. So, going through those waveforms, it starts to look very uniform because of the fact it's being snapped to our notes. And even, I mean, this kind of thing, I said on that last version, you will see this occasionally from Michael, but more often than not, when a singer hits a note dead on, they don't hold it on the note perfectly like this, just dead straight on the line. They will ascend through the note or descend through the note, keeping the voice and your vocal cords stuck literally at what would be zero sense, like on key, I've mentioned before about being dead on key would be zero, and then five cents sharp means that you're going a little bit higher from the note and five cents flat, you go a little bit lower. And if you go 100 cents lower or 100 cents higher, that takes you to the next note. So you can just be a few cents off, but the human ear won't be able to tell that, especially when vibrato is involved. The human voice is something that you can't control like a guitar or like a piano. You don't just press the notes and they come out perfectly. You have to manipulate your vocal cords to get those notes. So getting them all dead on like this, as I said, I've never seen anybody produce a vocal that looks like auto-tune when it's not auto-tune because this is so mechanical, it's a machine doing it. So let's get into the next phrase and during the extraction of the vocal, we have a little bit of the saxophone in there as well. So you have to try and ignore that. Obviously it throws the waveforms off a little bit, but we'll still be able to make out the notes that Michael's singing. Life's a wonderful thing. As long as I've got that string. And remember, this is his natural voice from the TV show now because they've turned off the auto-tune because it wasn't working. Look at this. Vibrato sharp and we're starting flat. Little bit of vibrato, again, ascending through the note. So this is starting to look natural. Michael's a great singer. So look at this, how close he is to the line here but not dead on, just slightly sharp, the vibrato sharp. And then he goes very sharp, comes back down again with a vibrato. And here again, sharp and then flat. But this is just indicating what I've just explained about great singers. They're never just dead on the line. I'd be a crazy so-and-so if I should ever let you go. Great example there right at the end pretty much, I'd say dead on it, is not auto-tune, not directly on the line, but just flat of the line, but so consistent. And then a little bit sharp ascending to well sharp of the sharp three. So you can see we're almost between notes here, but that's because there's no auto-tune. This is his natural voice. And when you listen to that final phrase, let's listen to it again. If I should ever let you go. That last note, you don't question it, even though it's sharp, it's halfway between notes. If I should ever let you go. And we ascend from already being a little bit sharp here, we then ascend even higher with the vibrato. So it just proves that autotune really isn't needed with great singers because even when great singers don't hit the notes dead on, because of their vibrato and their expression, the way that they're singing, you don't question it anyway. Okay, same section, but now Madison Square Garden auto tune the whole way through. Life's a wonderful thing As long as I have got that string I'd be a silly so-and-so 
The vice will never let her go. The other thing about auto-tune I said about producers and actually a lot of you out there watching the channel have been able to hear the auto-tune without necessarily having to see the waveforms. And now the technology exists to be able to extract a vocal and put it into software like this, it means that potentially everyone who's been using auto-tune can now be <laughs> exposed for using auto-tune. Some people do it intentionally and are using it artistically, which is fine, but other people are using it on studio albums and live, but not saying that they're doing it. And I think some people have a problem with that. But as we go back through this, you'll be able to see how it's now so uniform the way that things are getting snapped to the lines. We're spending so much time just hovering on the line. And when we do generally, descend to another note or ascend, we're gonna be on the lines again. Uh, let me just move it forward again. So again, another vocal phrase here, dead on the line, dead on the line, starting dead on the line. It's just too consistent for a great singer. That's how ironic it is that auto-tune is trying to make, or producers are trying to make singers sound better, but it starts sounding too good, it's too close to the note. So great singers don't sound like auto-tune because auto-tune is too perfect. You need the imperfection of a great singer to sound great. So I think you guys will be able to start to almost draw your own waveforms for auto-tune and the live performance. And the live performance here is only happening because they've had a problem with auto-tune. So we get to appreciate Michael's voice. We're just gonna hear the end phrases because I think it's a really good representation of auto-tune waveforms and natural waveforms. So first of all, from the TV show where they've turned it off. Oh, what a world, what a life. Oh, what a world, oh, what a life. So here, you can see the way that, again, we're sharp here with the vibrato and it sounds great. We are, dead on pitch on the C sharp four, and then we ascend. Like I said earlier, great singers travel through notes. They don't just hold straight notes all the time like a machine because that just sounds like there's no expression there. He then went a little bit sharp, then came down again, went back up again, sharp again to more of an extent. The first time he did it, second time is higher. Uh, pitch wise, again, a little bit sharp, but as we then keep going, let's keep this rolling. And I'm in love. And there, look how spot on he was on the A3. This will happen with great singers, and I know that some people have said, oh, on the vocal waveforms where there wasn't any auto tune, the person sang directly on the line. So, what does that mean? How can you prove that? it was not auto-tune or that it was auto-tune if both of them have notes that are on the lines. When somebody's singing live with a natural voice, great singers will hit the lines now and again, but it's not all the time. Hopefully you'll be able to see the difference in the waveforms. So this is natural, we're looking at at the moment, and this is auto-tune. Look how uniform this is. Dead on the line, dead on the line. It's just snapping to the lines all the time. Snap to the lines, dead on the line, you know, the whole way through, and that's for the whole performance. But if I now get rid of that, hopefully you can start to see how much more random a real voice looks like. That is auto-tune, that's a real voice. So for me, looking at it, it's night and day. I know that a lot of people can't see it quite as cl clearly as I see it because I know what I'm looking at. I know that I'm looking at a vocal waveform and the pitch that the voice is creating. So between these two, you can see that here, we're kind of all over the place. And if the lines were joined up, they would be like this, all random and vibrato's in there as well, so it'll be quite wild going up and down. As soon as auto-tune's there, you get the lines being snapped to, and it just starts to look like these castles, which I've mentioned before. If artists were using auto-tune live, would you mind that? If your favorite artist was performing live and you could hear auto-tune and it went wrong, and they weren't saying they used auto-tune, would you see that artist in a different light if you thought that they were singing live without any help at all, getting their notes to the correct pitch? 
it really is like a can of worms that we're opening here because you realize how regularly it's being used, not only in the studio, but for live performances. And when you hear Michael's natural voice in this example, it sounds better than auto-tune. So you've got to start to ask why are the production crew behind the scenes at live gigs putting auto-tune on his voice, especially when it can go wrong. If there's a problem with auto-tune and for Michael, it's a little bit less of a problem. Obviously, it sounds horrendous and weird and it exposes the fact that he's using it for live performances, but he's the kind of guy that can then get away with it without auto-tune. He doesn't need it in the first place, but the fact that he uses it might make you see him in a different light if you've been to a live performance in the past, but it shows that he doesn't actually need it because they turned it off and then it sounded great afterwards. It's sad from the point of view that the industry is doing this to singers and I think it's really important that everybody knows that it's happening out there and maybe artists themselves might be being auto-tuned and then not realizing it or if they do now realize it, maybe they can have a word with a record label and maybe Michael can say to his record label, I don't want auto-tune anymore because Phil from Wings of Pegasus has now told all of his subscribers that we're using it. And it might be the case that the production team now think, oh, technology as it is now, being able to put vocal waveforms on screen and isolate vocals, we can't get away with it anymore. So maybe it's best to start not using it live and actually allow the artist to sing live without going through a machine first. And dare I say that it would now make singing live what it used to be. So people that can't hit the notes live now can't sing live because they will get exposed for using auto-tune and they'll have to do it live because we can isolate any vocals here and let me know in the comment section below any vocals you want analyzed for pitch correction, auto-tune. If there's somebody that you think might be using it, not only in the studio and not using it artistically, but to help them hit notes, or if they're using it live and you think they're using it live, we can look at it. Anyway, thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at. Keep those suggestions, requests in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!